If you will turn with me to Hebrews 11.1. 1. We're going to look at some things this morning. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Not seen. If you see it, it's not faith. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I, being an ex-grammar teacher, will tell you that this word hope is not the hope that we have in the English language today. Amen. The hope that we have in English language today is a desire. I hope that Paul brings donuts on Friday. Yes. Anyway, that, <laughs> he did. Now, that's hope. I desire. I hope for. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. That's not this word. You look up this word, this means expectation. Expecting. Not desiring, expecting. So now faith is the substance of things expected. Expected. The evidence of things not seen. And as we've all been taught, faith is a spirit. It's one of the seven spirits of God, right? Amen. Right. Okay, now turn with me to Hebrews 4. I'm going to begin in verse 1. It says, Let us therefore fear, the writer of Hebrews speaks, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. What is that rest of God? It's when God does everything and you just watch. It's when God takes over your life. No. The rest of God, the Sabbath of God, is when God gives you your job, when God gets you your money. And that uh, means gives you the job, and now you get the money. It means God tells you to do this, and you go there. It means God tells you to go over there, and you do this. It's when God is ruling your life. You know, I have a, a perfect example of this yesterday. I was telling Doyle last night. Saturdays, uh, uh, a lot of times, are I'm alone, and I love it. It gives me time to get ready for today. Prayer, reading, fasting, seeking God. What he wants done today. And yesterday, about uh, he was Doyle was out having dinner with Terry, and they were out praying. Well, at about I don't know, it was about seven. 7 o'clock, 7.30. Anyway, I had finished reading. I'd read for several hours, or, and, and I was think, uh, feeling in my spirit, asking the Holy Ghost, asking the Father, what do you want me to do next? Because there was like a void there. And I thought, this is unusual. Usually my Saturday nights, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And there was a void. And I thought, well, I could go do this, and that wasn't right. I thought I could go do this, that wasn't right. And so I thought, well, I'm going to sit down and pray. It wasn't two minutes, Dole walked in. If I'd have gone and done one of the things that I thought of, it, uh, uh, it had messed up the evening. Dole walked in, we got in the car, and we took off north and started praying. That's how the Holy Spirit leads us. What is that called? That's the rest of God. Why? You're walking by faith. You're walking in the Spirit. Now, it says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached. You got that? You can't be a water of life one week without the gospel being preached to you. The gospel being preached. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached. Paul said to the Hebrews, the gospel was preached to you. What is the gospel? You're going to find that. The definition of the gospel is in 1 Corinthians. Joel said it this morning. Chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. The gospel is that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. And that's what these people, the Hebrews, were given. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached, the word preached did not profit them. Didn't profit them. They heard the gospel. Who's he talking about? He's talking about the Jews in the wilderness. He said the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. In them that heard. They heard it. They heard the gospel. Did you know that the Jews in the wilderness heard the gospel? Turn with me to Deuteronomy 18. They heard it. Moses preached it. Deuteronomy 18, 18 is one of the places where he preached it. He actually preached the gospel in several places, but this is one. Moses speaking, he's uh, actually the Lord speaking, verse 17. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that they have spoken. The people said, we don't want to hear God's talk anymore. He talks and it scares us. It says, I will raise them up a prophet among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. 
And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Who's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. That's the gospel. Let's go back to Hebrews 4. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard. You know you can hear the gospel every week and it won't profit you. You know, I get messages quite a few times. Uh, Kathy, that message was so anointed. Great. Did you put your faith with it? Did you put your faith with it? You know, sitting there thinking, what a wonderful message, is not all the time putting your faith with it. Do you know that you can come to Water of Life every time the door opens? You can be sitting in those blue chairs, but if you don't put your faith with the gospel, it will not profit you, and you will be destroyed. Did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know you have to mix faith with the gospel? You have to. You know, I have a, uh, there's a wonderful story uh, of Smith Wigglesworth I love. He was at a, a, a luncheon, a, a big luncheon, and it was, to all, it was to a bunch of clergy. And they were all dressed up in their suits, and it was a whole bunch of theologians. And they had this big banquet, and Smith Wigglesworth was asked to speak. They were not familiar with Smith. Smith. So he goes in and he preaches. He preaches them the gospel. He talks to them about faith. And he talks to them about the Holy Ghost. And they're all watching him. And in the middle, toward the end of his speech, toward the end of his speaking, somebody breaks out in tongues. Breaks out in this banquet in tongues. And he said all the clergy were bending their necks trying to figure out who it was. And they're all turning around. They're trying to figure out who was it that broke out in tongues. You know who it was? The servant girl. The servant girl. None of the clergy, none of the theologians. It was the servant girl. Why? Faith. Faith in what she heard. She mixed her faith with what Smith was preaching. She mixed her faith with it. Isn't it wonderful that the lowly, the lowly can get everything with faith? Now, turn with me to Hebrews 11.6. No. I want you to realize, what was it that was preached to the Jews that they didn't mix faith with it? The gospel. The gospel. It says they didn't mix faith with the gospel. You have to mix your faith with the gospel. You have to mix your faith with Jesus died for you, that he was buried for you, that he rose again for you. Do you understand? Do you ever think about this? When Jesus was put on that cross and he died on the cross, everyone's sin of the whole world was on that body. And when he was raised from the dead, everyone in the whole world was forgiven. Everyone was. Everyone was. How come everyone isn't walking in it? Because they don't believe. <clears throat> Whoa. They don't believe. You have a choice with the gospel. Every time you hear it, you can either accept it, believe it, or you can reject it. But that gospel, your sins have been forgiven whether you want it or not. You have to make the decision to receive it. Whoa. You have to make the decision to believe it. And it will not manifest for you until you believe it. But your sins are forgiven. Everyone in the world has been healed. Everyone's been healed. But you have to believe it for it to manifest. Isn't that amazing? Everyone's been justified. Every one of us have been made rich through the gospel. Every one of us. But you have to receive it. You have to believe it for it to manifest. But it's already been done. And so let's go back to Hebrews 11.1. 1. I think this is amazing. Well, actually, let's go to uh, verse 6. It says, but without faith, without faith, without faith, it is impossible. Impossible. Impossible to please God. You mean oh. my coming to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, even when I don't want to, will not please God? No. No. What pleases God? Faith. Oh, one of the 
of the testimonies of Joel's that he spoke early on when I was here got me. He was in Argyle, and he was doing everything he could to get out of Argyle. He was reading this person's book and that person's book, and he was listening to the gospel on tape, and he had all these tapes, and he's driving down the road. I will never forget this. I will never forget this. He's driving down the road, and he's telling God, look, I'm reading this book. I'm reading the Bible. I'm doing this. I've got this tape. I've got that book, and I'm doing this. And he stops, and God says, I respond to faith. What? I respond to faith. I respond to faith. I don't respond to how you look. I don't respond to how you act. I don't respond to what you eat. I respond to faith. I respond to faith. Hmm. You remember too much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, how do we get out of our mess? Faith. Your mess has already been cleaned up. Your mess has already been paid for. Every problem you have has already been dealt with on the cross. Every problem. What does it take to bring it to fruition? Faith. 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 And you know where that faith comes from? Hebrews 10 says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing what? The gospel. The gospel. If you go to, to, let's go there. Some of you need to see that. Thank you, Jesus. It's the gospel is where your faith comes from. You it's, Romans. That's, I'm sorry, Romans 10. Romans 10, um, verse 15. It says, how should they preach except they be sent? And how is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. The gospel. And bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, who has believed our report? You see what faith does? Faith is part of obedience. Believing. They have not all obeyed. They haven't believed. Faith. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And what's Paul speaking about? The gospel, the gospel, your faith in the gospel. One last verse, and then I'll give it back to Dole. Ephesians 2, 8. Ephesians 2, 8. This is a beautiful verse. It's an absolutely beautiful verse. It says, for by grace, by grace are you saved. By grace, you don't deserve it. You didn't ask for it. You didn't even want it. But Jesus died, was buried, and rose again for you anyway. He paid for your sins. You are forgiven if you believe it. He paid for your poverty. You are rich if you will believe it. You are healed if you believe it. If you believe it. If you put your faith with the gospel. It says, for by grace, something you don't deserve, you are saved through faith. And you know what the wonderful thing about faith is? The next phrase. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. That faith is a gift. You have it. You have it. That faith was given to you to be born again. God is not going to leave you an orphan. When you were born again, he gave you the faith to be born again. That's the grace. That's the grace. He is the author. Jesus is the author, the beginning of your faith. And he will bring your faith through. He, what's it say? He is the beginning. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. You know why you got problems right now? So you have to use your faith. You have to use your faith. If you don't have any problems right now, I doubt you're walking with God. And if you got a lot of problems, hallelujah, you're walking with God. Amen. Your faith is being tried. And when it is finished, it'll, sh it'll be gold. And that's the gold Jesus is talking about in the church of the Laodiceans, I think it is. He said, buy that gold. Use your faith. Put your faith in the gospel. And you know how you know your faith works? When it works.